Chilling audio of state police in Delaware arresting Lewis Coleman the afternoon of February 28, 2019, asking him if he's traveling alone. Police would discover the remains of Jassy Correa in a suitcase inside Coleman's trunk. Jassy Correa, a vibrant and ambitious young woman, embarked on a night out with friends filled with laughter and joy. Little did she know that this would be a fateful night that would forever change her life. As the night progressed, a sinister figure, lurking in the shadows, saw an opportunity and seized it. Jassy was abducted. Her world turned upside down in an instant. The city became gripped with fear as the search for Jassy intensified. Each passing moment heightened the suspense as the community held its breath, hoping for her safe return. The investigation led the authorities on a treacherous journey through a web of secrets and deception. Time was running out, and the clock ticked relentlessly as they raced against the odds to rescue Jassy. Will they uncover the truth in time? The suspense mounts, gripping the hearts of all who follow the harrowing story of Jassy Correa. What the investigation uncovered was the case of a brutal attack by someone who she thought was just helping her. Welcome to Tearful Crimes, a channel dedicated to sharing true crime stories from around the world. If you find these stories compelling, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing to support our channel. Now, let's dive back into the video. Jassy Gelsa Pires Correa was a vibrant and beloved member of the Boston community. Her friends and family describe her as a kind and caring person with a contagious zest for life. She had a deep love for dancing and would often light up the dance floor with her energetic moves. Jassy was born on February 26, 1996, in Praia Cabo Verde Islands to her loving father, Joaquin Correa of Dorchester, and her mother, Salette Vicente Valadero of Lisbon, Portugal. She had a brother called Joel Correa. At the age of three, Jassy immigrated to the United States with her father, and they settled in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Jassy loved her life in the U.S. and was planning her future just like many young people. Although she worked as a hostess at Del Frisco Restaurant in Boston, her most cherished role in life was being a loving mother to her two-year-old daughter, Gabriela Castro, who they referred to as Gabby. Gabby's father was a man who was no longer with Jassy. In fact, he was serving time in prison for assaulting her. Jassy was, however, very close with his mother, who would help her with Gabby occasionally, including on the night of this incident. Jassy had a unique ability to bring laughter to even the toughest moments. Above all, she treasured the time she spent with her family, friends, and especially her daughter, enjoying precious moments together at the park. Jassy also had a passion for photography and had a keen eye for capturing beautiful moments. She would often bring her camera along to family gatherings and events, capturing memories that would be cherished forever. On Saturday, February 23rd, 2019, Jassy Correa decided to go out to celebrate her birthday early with her friends, since her actual birthday would be falling on the following Tuesday. They chose to go to Venue, a popular nightclub located in Boston's theater district on Warrenton Street. Excitement filled the air as Jassy and her friend, Aja Hiltz and others, entered the vibrant club, ready to dance the night away and enjoy some celebratory champagne. As the night progressed, Jassy and Aja immersed themselves in the lively atmosphere, moving to the rhythm of the music and sharing joyful moments with their friends. The drinks flowed freely, adding to the festive ambiance. The night was filled with laughter, dancing, and celebration. However, as the clock struck midnight and Sunday, February 24, 2019 began, a series of events took a dark turn. Jassy and one of her friends would get into an argument while they were still in the club. The fight would eventually continue outside the club. It is unknown what it was about. Nevertheless, this led to the group splitting up and Jassy would eventually end up alone outside the club. Surveillance footage captured Jassy Correa on the sidewalk outside the nightclub around 2.14 a.m. She appeared to be engaged in conversation with several individuals, her intoxication evident. 
It was later reported that Jassy was trying to catch an Uber to her friend's apartment to retrieve her belongings that she had left there earlier before heading back to her own apartment. Mistakenly, Jassy entered an Uber vehicle that was not intended for her. This Uber driver was waiting to get a larger group of people to service because he would be paid more as UberX. The driver therefore refused to give Jassy a ride and forcefully pushed her out of the car, causing her to stumble and fall to the ground. This incident attracted the attention of a man standing nearby, a man who would soon become a central figure in this tragic tale. The man, observing Correa's vulnerable state, approached her and offered his assistance. Seizing the opportunity, he convinced Correa to leave the area with him, and together they entered a red sedan parked nearby. This would be the last time Correa was seen moving as she disappeared into the night, leaving her family and friends in anguish. Two days later, on Tuesday, February 26, 2019, Correa's father and a concerned friend who was at the club with Jassy that night reported her missing to the Boston police. The investigation began as the police traced Jassy's steps on the night of her disappearance. They started with the video footage from the club, what they uncovered was shocking. The investigation revealed that the man who left with Jassy also went to the same club that night, as shown by the club's extensive camera surveillance system. He was seen talking to another young woman throughout the night, but eventually she left the club with her friends, leaving the man behind. Outside the club, they saw the man help Jassy after the Uber driver pushed her out of his car. He took this opportunity to jump in and help Jassy up from the ground where she had fallen. They spoke for a few minutes before walking off together. He would later be seen carrying Jassy on his back as he headed towards his car parked nearby. He put her in the passenger side seat before getting in as well. The car stayed parked there with both of them for over 12 minutes. Then the car lights turns on and the car takes off. Due to the extensive camera footage collected inside and outside the club, investigators were able to identify the man as the 32-year-old Louis Coleman III. He was from Rhode Island. Erica, it seems Boston police believe that this may be a kidnapping. I want to get right to the man that police have announced they are looking for, his 32-year-old Louis Coleman III of Providence, Rhode Island. He is wanted in connection with the disappearance of Jassy Correa. Meanwhile, you're going to start to see these flyers all over Boston. Friends and family are putting them up in a desperate attempt to find her. The family of Jassy Correa is worried unable to contact her since Saturday night. I'm trying to call her, but the phone is, is off. The 23-year-old Dorchester woman was celebrating her birthday at venue in the theater district. Early Sunday morning, she was seen on surveillance video leaving. That's her on the right. And overnight, police released this video of a man they say they want to speak with. They say he was seen with Correa after she left, later getting into a red Nissan Altima with the man near Tremont and Herald Streets. Family and friends now eager to find her. I can't do nothing because I, I, I want to say, is somebody know or somebody have a, my daughter? They tell New Center 5 she has a two-year-old daughter and would never intentionally leave. If she's being held against her will, her father has this message. Please just let her go. Call me or call the police department, boss or anybody, because there's no fear. They collected more camera footage following Coleman's direction. Coleman was then seen heading to his apartment in Rhode Island some two hours later, where more surveillance footage showed him pulling and dragging Jassy's lifeless and naked body into the elevator. This part is too graphic to show. It was believed that Jassy was already dead at this time. Coleman was also captured on surveillance footage at a Walmart store, purchasing a disturbing array of items. Among the purchases were three Tyvek suits, duct tape, candles, electrical tape, a mask, surgical gloves, safety goggles, a respirator, and a bleach bath product. The sinister implications of these items would soon be revealed. The following day, Wednesday, February 27, 2019, Boston police released a missing person alert for Correa, sharing her photos and those of the man she was last seen with, along with the surveillance footage. Coincidentally, surveillance footage from Coleman's apartment building revealed his arrival at 9.58 p.m. 
carrying a large dark colored suitcase with bright blue piping. The suitcase appeared brand new, still adorned with sales tags. As the days went by, the evidence against Coleman continued to mount. On Thursday, February 28, 2019, he was caught on camera wheeling the suspicious suitcase from his apartment towards the building's elevator at 1.15 a.m. Struggling with the weight, he placed the suitcase into the trunk of his red sedan. At this point, law enforcement authorities were closing in on the truth. Between 2.44 a.m. and 4.02 a.m., Coleman made multiple trips from his apartment, carrying various items that raised suspicion. These included cardboard boxes, trash bags, a bottle of bleach, a computer tower, a black laptop case, and a small duffel bag. Inside Coleman's apartment, investigators executed a search warrant and discovered two respirator masks and other incriminating items. They also noticed that one of the sofa cushions was missing its cover, adding to the growing list of evidence. Outside the apartment complex, law enforcement officers continued to collect evidence from a dumpster. They recovered numerous items, including trash bags, plastic sheets, men's jeans stained with bleach, a belt, a hooded coverall, an empty box of baking soda, safety goggles, a respirator mask packaging, rubbing alcohol, Walmart bags, used plastic gloves, an empty package from a car air freshener, empty packages of purifying charcoal, and a sponge. Each item seemed to tell a chilling tale of the depravity that had taken place. Investigators have been searching Coleman's apartment in Providence all day. Our team coverage continues now with WBZ's Bill Shields. He is live at that scene down in Providence. Bill. And David, while you know, and right now everyone knows that police in three different states have been involved in this. This apartment here in Providence, this apartment complex, has been the focus today of intense police activity. It started early this morning, around 6.30, when police from Providence and the state of Rhode Island and Boston showed up here and started going through a six-floor unit on the top of the building. They started bringing out evidence in bags. They were here all day, a small army of detectives. At one point, they started going through the dumpsters outside and one that is inside the building looking for ostensibly evidence. Just a little while ago, the police chief of Providence came out and spoke with us about what they had potentially found that could lead to probable cause. As you can imagine, there's a lot of uh, combing of the area for surveillance footage, for uh, canvassing of other neighbors, of other businesses in the community, of other incidents we may have had here in Providence. All that takes place in the investigation, and it will play out. It'll be interesting. And the police chief would not say this afternoon, the police chief would not say whether or not he suspected that Jesse was actually murdered here or somewhere else. He did say that there was quite a bit of evidence here in the unit, and they are still looking around this neighborhood for surveillance video. Reporting live from Providence, I'm Bill Shields, WBZ News. Midday on Thursday, the authorities released Coleman's picture as the prime suspect in the kidnapping case. The net was closing in. Later that day, he was apprehended on Interstate 95 near Wilmington, Delaware, driving the red Buick sedan registered under his mother's name in California. Upon being stopped by the police and asked if anyone else was in the car, Coleman uttered the chilling words, she's in the trunk. What awaited the authorities in the trunk of the car was a horrifying sight. Inside a large dark colored suitcase, similar to the one Coleman had been seen carrying, they discovered the lifeless body of a woman who bore an uncanny resemblance to Jassy Correa. The body exhibited signs of blunt force trauma. Coleman was arrested and was facing charges of kidnapping, resulting in death, a federal offense that carries a mandatory life sentence. This was a federal indictment because he crossed state lines with the body of Jassy. Coleman refused to talk as he was held in Delaware. The authorities released a detailed report of what they believed happened that fateful night when Jassy's path crossed Coleman's. Horrific new details about exactly what prosecutors say happened to Jesse Correa the night she was allegedly kidnapped from outside a Boston nightclub and later killed. 32-year-old.
Lewis Coleman appeared in federal court in Delaware this afternoon and agreed to return to Boston to face a kidnapping charge. Court paperwork filed over the weekend laid out the lengths Coleman allegedly went to to try to cover up his crime. WBZ's Christina Hager is here now with the details. Christina? Well, Paula, there is no murder charge at this point, but the charge Lewis Coleman does face could be even more serious because it is at the federal level, kidnapping resulting in death. That carries a possible sentence we don't have in our local courts, the death penalty. The process. Execution in this case is using all of the tools in their box. Legal analyst Jennifer Roman says the case against Lewis Coleman veered into the hands of federal law enforcement when it crossed state lines from Boston, where the Raytheon engineer allegedly met Jesse Correa after a night at Venue Nightclub, to Providence, where he lives, and Delaware, where they found the young mother's body in his trunk. And when you have a situation like this where there appears to be a lot of very damaging evidence, the prosecution is giving the defendant the choice, plead guilty to life without parole, or we're going to seek the death penalty. A look through the Boston federal court affidavit shows a more than four-day-long timeline from security camera footage. Sunday, February 24th, 2.15 a.m., Correa leaves venue and gets in a car with Coleman. 4.25 a.m., Coleman carries Correa into his Providence apartment. On Tuesday, February 26th, he returns to his apartment with Walmart bags. He bought three Tyvek suits, duct tape, two candles, electrical tape, a mask, surgical gloves, safety goggles, an odor respirator, and bleach. Next day, Wednesday, February 27th at 9.58 p.m., he returns to his apartment with a suitcase. Then on Thursday, February 28th at 1.15 a.m., he puts the suitcase in the trunk of his car and is arrested in Delaware that afternoon. Attorney Lelling said federal and local investigators are also looking into other missing person cases. They'll be running his DNA and taking steps to cast a wider net. David. The family as well as the community could not believe this shocking news as they came together to remember the vibrant Jassy. A community coming together in grief, remembering a young mother kidnapped and killed after a night out as the city begins taking steps to make Boston nightclubs safer. This was an emotional vigil tonight for people mourning the death of Jesse Correa. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Hughes. And I'm Leah Martin. She was the second woman abducted outside a Boston bar this year. And as Katie Brace tells us, the city is now taking action. A vigil was held for Jesse Correa here at St. Peter's. It was just a week ago that police found the 23-year-old's body. She was last seen leaving a nightclub, and now there's a push for more surveillance around Boston's nightlife. And I've just been grieving. It's been overwhelming. The bitter cold could not stop family members from holding candles, recognizing Jesse Correa's life. Nothing like this before in our community. Strangers offered their support, horrified by the tragedy of Correa's kidnapping and murder. That's not the way nobody should go. We live they can't even go out and have a good time. You know. Correa is one of two women this year who was kidnapped after leaving a Boston establishment. City leaders want to recruit bars and nightclubs to keep an eye on patrons. When they leave the, leave the restaurants and bar rooms that they have and the nightclubs, that they kind of keep an eye on them and see what, what, what's going on. They're also encouraging more technology, which was crucial in making arrests in both cases. Surveillance video helped police arrest Victor Pena for kidnapping and raping a woman who left Tennessee's bar. Lewis Coleman had his license scanned when he entered Venue Nightclub. That led investigators to him and the discovery of Correa's body in the trunk of his car. Ensuring that everybody's taking advantage of the technology. Queen Warnham worries about her four daughters, whom she has already told to stay on alert. So we just got to stick together as, as family, friends, unity, and the community. The city will hold a meeting with bars and nightclubs next week. Awake for Correa is tomorrow, her funeral on Saturday. In Dorchester, Katie Brace, WBC News. As the family is dealing with their grief, the authorities took action to ease the stressful situation by promising that justice would be served. They wanted to make sure the public was aware that they would work on making sure Boston was safe for everyone. While Coleman's own family could not believe what he was accused of doing. Know the right thing you have to do in the life. You can't take nobody's life like this. The heartbroken father of Jesse Correa 
talking about his daughter's stunning death. The 23-year-old kidnapped and killed after leaving a Boston nightclub. A suspect is in custody but is yet to be returned back to New England. His family members tell us that they're also stunned. Christina Rex is in Boston tonight where a city and a family are demanding justice. Jesse Correa's father is at home here in Dorchester with family tonight. He says he's still in shock and has no words for the man who allegedly took his daughter from him. I don't have no idea to suggest he's not this man or not. Because I never see this man in my life. Joaquin Correa is at a loss for words 24 hours after his daughter's body was found in the trunk of a car in Delaware. Driven by a man he's never seen. He was a good, honest guy, as far as I knew. Suspect Lewis Coleman's relative spoke only to WBZ's I team. He says Coleman grew up in a good family, has a master's degree in physics, and was never into trouble. Growing up, I mean, he was always that cousin that everyone wanted to be like. So I, I have no idea what could have got him in this situation. It's a picture of Lewis Coleman Jesse's family can't imagine. Nasty man. He's next. Coleman was arraigned in Delaware on fugitive charges and is wanted in Rhode Island for kidnapping, concealing a crime, and mutilation of a body. No family deserves this. Boston city leaders visited Jesse's family Friday and promised justice. Let's not fall into a discussion about whether we should walk home alone or how many people we should call when we're leaving the club. District Attorney Rachel Rollins says the evidence will determine where Lewis Coleman is prosecuted, but she hopes it's here in Boston. And her community deserves the chance to see justice done in this city. Until then, Jesse's family is holding one another tight. So if you have a child, just hold them tight. Just give him a hug. A GoFundMe page created for Jesse's two year old daughter has already raised more than $100,000 in just 24 hours. Her father says he's grateful, but it will never take away his pain or bring his daughter back. In Dorchester, Christina Rex, WBZ News. Jassy was beautifully laid to rest in her local church. The service was attended by many members of the community, including law enforcement. After killing Jassy and scrambling to find ways to dispose of her body, Coleman wasted no time in trying to find a date. The court documents would reveal that Coleman was texting with another woman to arrange a date, while Jassy's lifeless body was believed to still be in his apartment. New evidence filed by prosecutors in the kidnapping and death of Jassy Correa shows the suspect sent flirtatious text messages to a woman while Correa lay dead in his Providence condo. In one text, prosecutors say Louis Coleman tells the woman he is about to catch his flight back to California, but promises to let her know when he's in town so they can meet up. Prosecutors say Coleman sent these texts just hours after he kidnapped Correa from outside a Boston nightclub and strangled her to death. She was later found dead in the trunk of his car in Delaware. Coleman could face the death penalty, and he has pleaded not guilty. Coleman was later extradited to Boston to face federal charges. Accused of kidnapping a Boston mother whose body was found dead in the trunk of his car is locked up in Massachusetts tonight. Lewis Coleman made his first appearance in federal court in Boston today. Why federal court? Let's get right to Christina Rex. And Christina, if he's convicted in federal court, he could possibly face the death penalty. David, he could. And it's up to the U.S. Attorney's Office and a federal panel to decide if the death penalty is something they want to pursue. But as you'll see, Jesse. Correa's family and friends and our legal analysts are torn. Did he tell you why he did it? I don't have any comment. Thank you. Lewis Coleman's court-appointed lawyers refused to talk to the media after his first appearance in Boston federal court on charges of kidnapping resulting in death. I don't want to talk right now. Jesse Correa's family left the courthouse emotional after sitting front row, watching Coleman in handcuffs, an orange jumpsuit, his eyes low. A 14-page complaint outlines a timeline that spans five days and three states. From Coleman allegedly kidnapping Jesse at a Boston nightclub to her body found in his trunk four days later. If convicted, he could face the death penalty or life in prison. I don't think it's unlikely. I just think they want to know more about him. The victim's family and friends are torn. Yes and no. I would rather him just like rot in jail with other people, so... Why, why would you like to see him? I'd rather him get the death penalty because he took Jesse's life. The U.S. Attorney.
Attorney's office has to decide if it wants to pursue the death penalty. We don't have the death penalty. Legal analyst Phil Tracy says there's a lot to consider. I just think they want to know more about him. For instance, does he have a history of violence towards women? Does he have uh, a record? Does he have any sort of mental incompetence? And as Coleman's case progresses, Boston police are trying to figure out how to make the city safer. They're holding a meeting tomorrow night with representatives from all the city's bars and nightclubs to discuss strategies for protecting patrons. Lisa? Christina, thank you. Coleman's trial began in Boston's federal court in 2022, where Assistant U.S. Attorney Eliana Newsom presented the case to the jury. Newsom alleged that Correa had been abducted, sexually assaulted, and killed by Coleman. She stated that Coleman's DNA was found in various parts of Correa's body. David Hoos, Coleman's defense attorney, maintained his client's innocence, but focused the jury's attention solely on the kidnapping charge since no other charges were brought against Coleman. To secure a conviction, the prosecution must demonstrate that Coleman kidnapped Correa, resulting in her death and crossed state lines. Prosecutors decided not to pursue the death penalty in this case. And the trial of the man accused of kidnapping and killing a woman celebrating her birthday is now underway. Louis Coleman III is now on trial for the death of Jassy Correa. NBC 10's Abby Nisgoda is live for us in Boston with the latest on this. Abby. Shannon, gruesome and emotional. That's how I would describe the opening statements that happened here today. This trial, of course, a long time coming. But inside the courthouse, Jassy Correa's family was sobbing. We're just going to wait for the justice. Three years after his sister vanished, leaving a Boston nightclub, he is reliving her final moments in the trial of her accused killer. She's my only sister I got. I don't have anyone else, so I'm going to tell you and then fight for her. Police say the photos and videos from that night in February of 2019 show Lewis Coleman putting Jassy Correa into his car, dragging her to his apartment in Providence, and eventually rolling her body out in a suitcase. Police would find that suitcase in the trunk of his car four days later. The prosecutor telling the jury, quote, she never arrived home, and the reason why is this defendant and his actions. He sexually assaulted her, strangled her to death, transported her across state lines, and then he tried to cover it up. Was the reason making him do that? And why? The defense argues Correa is the one who got aggressive, saying, quote, what happened in that car was not a planned event and not initiated by Lewis Coleman. They don't have to show that he actually murdered her, only that the kidnapping at the end of the day resulted in the death. NBC 10 Boston legal analyst Michael Coyne says that makes this case interesting, especially because the defense argues she initially got in Coleman's car willingly. But he says what Coleman allegedly did after, like Googling how to pull teeth and fit a person inside a suitcase, shows he had something to hide. The government will argue all of those acts subsequent to her death show consciousness of guilt. With that, this trial will pick up again first thing tomorrow morning with testimony from the first witness. That's one of Jassy Correa's friends who was with her the night she vanished. For now, we're live outside federal court in Boston. I'm happy to go to NBC 10 Boston. David Hoos emphasized that Coleman's actions on the early morning of February 24, 2019 should not define him entirely. The prosecutors presented evidence over several weeks to prove that Coleman had tricked Correa into getting into his car and sexually assaulted her. The extensive evidence included all the trail of video footages from the club all the way to the video of his arrest in Delaware. Tonight, we're getting a look at never before seen video evidence presented in the case against Lewis Coleman. He's the Providence man accused of kidnapping and killing Jazzy Correa in 2019. The videos played by federal prosecutors in court today show the moments Coleman was arrested and placed in the back of a patrol car. Prosecutors also presented emails Coleman sent to his job after the alleged crime. 12 News reporter Kim Kalunian joins us now with what the evidence reveals. Kim? Well, those videos and emails create a timeline of events beginning outside of a Boston nightclub where the pair met and ending with Coleman's eventual arrest hundreds of miles away in Delaware nearly five days later. Yeah. Yes. Where? 
Chilling audio of state police in Delaware arresting Lewis Coleman the afternoon of February 28th, 2019, asking him if he's traveling alone. Police would discover the remains of Jassy Correa in a suitcase inside Coleman's trunk. The same suitcase prosecutors say he purchased the day before at a Rhode Island Walmart. Prosecutors say he also bought items like tape, surgical gloves, and safety goggles in the days after he allegedly killed Correa, a 23-year-old mother from Massachusetts. Video surveillance showed earlier this week at Coleman's federal trial shows him and Correa outside a Boston nightclub in the early morning hours of February 24th, 2019. Prosecutors say video from several hours later shows Coleman bringing Correa's limp body up to his apartment in Providence. She's never seen leaving the Chestnut Street building. On Friday, the prosecution showed jurors this email that Coleman sent to his employer the following day saying, quote, just giving everyone a heads up that I'm still out sick. I'll be back in a few days. By the following day, Correa was reported missing. And by the early morning hours of February 28th, Providence police would be trying to access Coleman's building for a wellness check. By that afternoon, Coleman would be in custody. And jurors at federal court in Boston have heard from about 20 witnesses since opening statements on Tuesday. The prosecution is expected to continue laying out its case in federal court on Monday. Coleman has pleaded not guilty. I'm Kim Kalunian, 12 News. The defense, on the other hand, argued that there was no kidnapping and that Correa had willingly gone with Coleman leading to a violent struggle resulting in her death. The defense team showed the video footage of Correa getting on Coleman's back after leaving the club, suggesting that she was a willing participant. They also made several motions to declare a mistrial, but this was unsuccessful. The case would eventually go to the jury for deliberations, while Jassy's family and the community waited impatiently. Jury deliberations are done for the day on the trial of a man accused of killing a Boston mother. They will resume tomorrow morning. Lewis Coleman is charged with kidnapping and killing Jesse Correa back in 2019. It is a case we have followed now for years. Boston 25 News reporter Robert Golston live for us in Boston tonight. And Robert, you've stayed very close to this trial during the last four weeks, and this one's now in the hands of the jury. Yeah, they got the case, Vanessa, around 1.30 this afternoon. They had it for about three and a half hours. The judge sent them home at 5 o'clock. They'll be back here tomorrow. But earlier in the day, they heard the different versions of what the defense and the prosecution say happened that February night. Federal prosecutors began their closing showing this photo of Jessie Correa wearing the orange jumpsuit she bought to celebrate her birthday with friends at club venue in Boston. Four days later, prosecutors say her body was found in a suitcase in the trunk of Lewis Coleman's car. Federal prosecutors explained to the jury the five elements for kidnapping that they proved are enticing, luring the victim into the car, holding her against her will, crossing state lines into Rhode Island, and the suspect knowingly and willfully caused her death. The defense says there was no kidnapping, showing this video of Correa getting on Coleman's back after they left the club, saying you have to be a willing participant to accept a piggyback ride. The defense also told the jury, yes, she is dead and Mr. Coleman is responsible. We have not denied that, but he did not kidnap her. The defense claims Correa and Coleman had a consensual sexual encounter and something happened and turned violent. Prosecutors say the damage to the inside of the passenger side window shows where Correa hit it with her feet, which is evidence of her being held against her will. Prosecutors showed Coleman's injuries again, claiming Correa was fighting for her life while being strangled to death. The defense says Correa was using cocaine and alcohol and could be seen all night acting aggressively and was caught on surveillance cameras fighting with her friends. Friends. The defense ended its closing claiming Coleman panicked and did not know what to do and claims he did not call police because he had extreme mistrust being a black man. His attorney told the jury he offered to help her and it turned into the worst night of his life. In the rebuttal, the prosecutors told the jury it was the worst night of his life. Well, it turned out to be the last night of Jesse's life. And again, the jury will be back here in federal court tomorrow to continue deliberating. If convicted, Coleman faces up to life in prison. We are live in Boston. Robert Goulston, Boston 25 News. But ultimately, the jury found Coleman guilty, considering the evidence presented by the prosecution, 
such as damage to the car window and Coleman's injuries, indicating that Correa had fought for her life while being strangled to death. A jury has found Lewis Coleman guilty of kidnapping and killing a woman in Boston. Jurors only began deliberating yesterday. Lewis Coleman was found guilty of killing Jassy Correa in February of 2019. Police found him days later driving in Delaware. Correa's body was in the trunk. Lewis Coleman III was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Jassy's family was relieved that justice was served her brother Joel stating that they knew he was guilty and they are happy that the jury saw that as well. Breaking news, the man convicted of kidnapping a young mother from a Boston bar and killing her was just sentenced to life in prison. A little more than three years ago, Jassy Correa was abducted at a Boston bar. Lewis Coleman kidnapped her the night she was celebrating her birthday and killed her. Today, Correa's family got a chance to confront Coleman, calling him a monster. There are no winners today. What we saw in courtroom 10 in front of Judge Saylor was raw human emotion. It was words of eloquence and profound words from the family members of Jassy Carrera, who loved her, loved her so, so much. Kidnapping resulting in death carries a mandatory sentence of death or life in prison. The prosecution did not seek the death penalty in this case. The defense, meanwhile, says it will appeal. Throughout the trial, Correa's father, deeply affected by the loss of his daughter, attended court proceedings daily. He expressed gratitude for the justice served by the jury, but acknowledged that it could never bring Jassy back. Coleman would later appeal his conviction. The appeal brief argues that while Coleman admitted to causing Correa's death, he was not charged with homicide. The defense claims that the government's case against Coleman for kidnapping was weak and largely based on circumstantial evidence. Additionally, the brief alleges a racial bias in Coleman's conviction, stating that the court erred in denying motions to show prospective jurors a video about implicit bias and expert testimony on the impact of negative police encounters on black men. The man convicted in the kidnapping death of Jesse Correa is now appealing his conviction. Lawyers for Lewis Coleman filed their appeal today, arguing that the government's case was largely circumstantial. They're also claiming racial bias. You may remember back in 2022, Coleman was convicted of kidnapping Correa outside of a Boston nightclub. Her body found stuffed in a suitcase in the back of his car days later. The appeal process will now determine whether Coleman's conviction will stand or if there will be further legal proceedings in this tragic case. This case is a haunting reminder of the devastating consequences of violence and the lasting impact it has on families. What are your thoughts and feelings about this case? What do you think drove Lewis Coleman to commit this horrific act? What do you think about his appeal? Do you think he deserves a new trial? Let's continue the discussion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching Tearful Crimes. Don't forget to subscribe and to check out our other videos on the channel. Also, let us know if there are other cases you would like us to cover. Stay safe and see you in the next one.